What is going on guys, it's Panjana here, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys the NVIDIA Control Panel Ultimate Optimization video. This video is going to be offering you guys a very quick, simple, and easy to follow guide on how to fully optimize the NVIDIA Control Panel, which should result in a significant boost in terms of smoothness whilst inside of games, and overall performance. You should be seeing some FPS benefits with inside of here, a smoother experience with inside of pretty much every single game you're playing. With inside of this guide, we can make sure that we are running on all of the correct NVIDIA settings, making sure that you guys are getting the best power delivery with inside of your GPU, that you're running at the best resolution for your PC, the best refresh rate, the best colour settings, and overall just getting the most out of the GPU in which you're using. This video will not be covering anything which could void your warranty or cause any harm to your GPU, we're just simply going in and optimising the settings in which you're allowed to do so. But with that being said, I'll include a card on the screen now for my ultimate GPU overclocking guide, which you guys can also follow along with after this video to ensure that you guys are getting the best FPS and performance across the board. But for any of you guys who are just interested in further optimising the NVIDIA control panel settings itself, increase the overall smoothness whilst inside of games, and boost your FPS within a matter of minutes, then this is definitely the video for you. As always guys, if you guys are happy with this guide and you're happy with the results, please do leave a like on this video and feel free to comment down below with any results, questions, queries or suggestions for other videos. Please also share this video around with any friends, family, teammates or anyone like that who could also benefit from the optimizations with inside of this video. And also feel free to subscribe to the channel and press that bell notification to be notified instantly whenever I do upload a new video, whether that be a game specific guide or a PC specific guide or anything to do with networking or the likes of that, just to ensure that you guys are getting the best experience possible across the board with your technology without having to spend a penny. And last but not least, for my frequent followers who wish to further support the channel, my Patreon link is down in the description down below, which you can follow to help further support the channel if you wish to do so. With all that being said and done, let's get straight on into the guide. Right, so starting off, what we're going to be doing is navigating over to our desktop, going into a blank space and right clicking. You should now be able to access the NVIDIA control panel. If the NVIDIA control panel is not accessible through the desktop, you can also check in your icon bar in the bottom right hand side by clicking on the icon tray and looking for this logo found here. If you can't find the NVIDIA control panel in either of those places and you are using an NVIDIA GeForce graphics card, what you guys are going to have to go ahead and do is actually reinstall or update your drivers. To do this, simply follow the link in the description down below and you'll be brought to this website here. Simply navigate over to the Automatic Driver Updates tab found here, go to the NVIDIA Experience tab and hit Download. Download and install the program, it will go ahead and detect everything for you and install the latest driver for your GPU. Once you guys have done that, you might be prompted to restart your PC, come back to this guide and you should now be able to right click on your desktop or go into the icon tray and open the NVIDIA Control Panel. Once the NVIDIA Control Panel has opened up, it should look very similar to this. Starting off on the left hand side, we're going to be going over to the adjust image settings with preview. We're then going to be navigating down to these three options here and go to use my preference emphasizing and drag this all the way over to performance. Once that's then done, go ahead and press apply. Then proceeding on from there, we're then going to be setting this setting to use the advanced 3D image settings and pressing apply. And then once we're done with inside of there, we can then navigate over to the manage 3D settings tab here on the left hand side. With inside of here, we're then going to be going over to the Global Settings tab found here at the top to ensure that we're changing all of these settings across the board. With inside of here, we're going to be going over to Ambient Occlusion, switching this to Off. Anastropic Filtering, we're going to be turning to the Off position. Anti-Aliasing FXAA, switch to Off. Anti-Aliasing Gamma Correction, I keep on. Anti-Aliasing Mode, we switch to Off. But please do bear in mind that this does not change the ability to run anti-aliasing with inside of games. You can still control that. This is just further optimizing the GPU itself. And please do bear in mind if some of these options might be worded differently for you guys, or if you don't have some of the options there, don't worry, just follow along with the ones in which you can. Going over to the CUDA-GPUs tab and selecting all, or checking all of the graphics cards with inside of here, ensuring the tick box is checked. Press OK. DSR factors, we're going to be switching to the off position by making sure that we do not have anything with inside of here checked and pressing OK. That brings us on to maximum pre-rendered frames, and this is one of the most important steps with inside of here in terms of game smoothness. And you're going to want to be customizing this depending on what your system specs are like. Going over to the max pre-rendered frames tab, and we have the option to set this between 1 and 4. 1 is going to be giving you guys the best response time and the best frame times, and for any of you guys running on dated lower end hardware, you might actually find better results in terms of frame rates going with a higher number. So I'd say if your GPU is extremely low end and over 5 years old, I'd go with either 2 or 3. If you guys are running on a relatively modern GPU, I recommend definitely sticking with the value of 1, as that will give you guys the best results. But for any of you guys who are running on ultra low end systems and you're struggling to even get playable frame rates, I'd recommend setting this to a higher number. Multi frame sampled AA, we're going to be turning to the off position. OpenGL rendering GPU, we're going to be setting to auto select. And now another extremely important step with inside of here is to go to the power management mode, and we're going to be switching this to prefer maximum performance. Preferred refresh rate, we're going to be going over to highest available. Shader Cache, we're going to be turning to the on position. Texture Filtering, Anastropic Sample Optimizations is going to be switched to the on position. Texture Filtering, Negative LOD Bias is going to be allowed. Texture Filtering Quality is going to be set to High Performance. 
texture filtering, trilinear optimization is going to be switched to the on position. And threaded optimization, the majority of you guys can go ahead and set this to the auto position, but if you play games like Fortnite, PUBG, and other demanding games like that, I recommend switching this to the on position. But for the best results across the board, if you guys don't want to go ahead and test turning this on or off, just set this to auto. Triple buffering we're going to be switching to off, vertical sync we're going to be switching to the off position, and last but not least we're going to be going over to virtual reality pre-rendered frames, and we're going to be following the same rule of thumb in which we used for the maximum pre-rendered frames before. So match this number here to the number you set for the maximum pre-rendered frames. So for me I set that to 1, so I'm going to be setting this to 1 as well. Once you guys are done setting those settings, simply go ahead and press apply. Now I'm going to be going over to the display tab and clicking on change resolution. Ensuring that we then select our primary monitor, for me it's the XF250Q, going down to the PC resolutions and setting the highest resolution possible. And also ensuring that you go to the refresh rate tab found here and selecting the highest refresh rate possible. For this monitor that I'm running on here, it's 240Hz. It surprises me how many people buy 120, 140 and 240 hertz monitors and do not realise they do actually have to come inside of the NVIDIA control panel and actually set the refresh rate with inside of here. So for the very few of you that might have already done this, you'll be seeing some phenomenal results after applying this as you haven't even been running on the refresh rate you thought you were. Once those have then been set to their maximum values, go ahead and press apply and press yes. We're then going to be navigating back over to the left hand side and selecting adjust desktop colour settings. With inside of here we're then going to be going down to the use NVIDIA settings tab found here and pressing apply. Scrolling down even further and you can then find the digital vibrance setting. By default this is set to 50% and if you notice if you go ahead and actually start dragging this to the left and right you'll notice that the saturation in colours gets a lot brighter. For me I personally set this up to 80%, again this option here is personal preference and will not change the outcome of performance, but for any of you guys who might be playing competitive shooters or colourful games and you just wish to add the vibrance to help you guys see, I highly do recommend upping the digital vibrance to a level in which you are comfortable with. Once you've set your personal preference, go ahead and press apply again. Proceeding on from there we can then go ahead and skip out all of the rest of the options with inside of here and go down to the video tab and click on adjust video colour settings. With inside of here we can also select the with NVIDIA settings tab found here, then going to be going down to the advanced tab, going to dynamic range, selecting the drop down menu and selecting full 0 to 255, then going ahead and pressing apply. This should allow you guys whilst watching video content to be experiencing truer colours for a better visual experience. And last but not least you can also come down to the video image settings found here at the bottom left hand side and you can change these if you wish to do so to any value you wish as this is personal preference and again does not affect the output of performance with inside of the guide. These video options here are just whilst you're watching video content, but I thought it would be handy to just share with inside of this video. Then once you guys have reached this point in the video, you guys can go ahead and actually exit out of the NVIDIA control panel. Those settings are completely applied and you should be seeing some fantastic results in terms of overall game smoothness and frame rates with inside of games. And for any of you guys who frequently update your GPU drivers, you might want to go back into the NVIDIA control panel settings and ensure those settings are remaining the same, as sometimes with NVIDIA driver installations or updates, it can actually revert those settings back to the default values. So I do recommend every time you update your GPU driver or you'll notice that your GPU driver has updated, go back into the NVIDIA control panel and ensure those settings remain the same. And there you guys have it, that is the ultimate guide to optimising the NVIDIA control panel for some quick, easy and effective performance gains and latency gains with inside of any NVIDIA graphics card. Again I do urge everyone watching this video to go ahead and click on the card on screen now and at the end of the video to follow along with my ultimate GPU overclocking guide to ensure that you guys are getting phenomenal results across the board with inside of everything you're doing with inside of the GPU and just further increasing the amount of output you're getting from it with no cost whatsoever. It's extremely safe and easy to follow these days and I highly urge everyone to click on it. As always guys, if you guys are happy with the results, please do leave them down in that comment section down below and leave a like on the video. Alongside any questions, queries or suggestions for further content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and press that bell notification to be notified whenever I do upload. And once again, for any of you guys who are frequent followers of my content and wish to further support the channel, you can do so on Patreon down in the description down below, but it is not necessary. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. I've been Pan and I am out.